On the last part you did learn how to set up the basic form as a template driven form. On this part you learn how to add some basic validation and also how to submit the form. For that, let us go to our code. So in here let us start with the first one which is the email address. The first validation is going to be that this field is a required field. So this is required and it needs to also be an email address. On the next one where we have the phone number, if you want, you can use the default input tag pattern property and set a pattern. So for example, type in here pattern and the pattern is going to be, let's say a number between zero and nine and the dashes are also allowed. Now let us go to the rate. And here, since we have enforced that the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 10 and the step is one. Now we don't need to add any more validations in here. So let's just go to the other one, which is the feedback title. On the feedback title, what you can do is that you can make this required. And then just below here, you can also define a pattern where you allow just numbers and letters. So the pair is going to be letters from A to Z and then lowercase a to Z and also numbers from zero to nine and then a stash S. The last one is going to be the form validation. And down here, if you want, you can even leave this one just as a free text, not even make it required, or you can do the same thing. You just copy this one pattern, make this required. And then the pattern is going to be similar to the feedback title. Now here, let us also add a check on the submit feedback button in here. Let's say, so we have a class. We want to disable this button. So this button is going to be disabled if the feedback form is not form is not valid. So if the feedback form is not valid, then this button is going to be disabled. Now let us go to the component.ts and here we have created the submit feedback method. Inside here, I'm going to type console.log. So whenever you click the submit button, I want to get the feedback value. So feedback form submitted, just submit. And then in here, the feedback or this dot feedback. Let us save the changes. Let's go back to the app. You can see in here now that we have the feedback value set to eight, but the feedback button is disabled and that's because the email address is required. The phone number is required and all these other values. Let me just define here an email address. Let's say service at trupia.com. The phone number is going to be just numbers. Then we have, this is a title and this is feedback. And you can see that the feedback button is still disabled. So let us just go back to our app and add some more validation related information. And I'm going to start in here with the email address. So in here on the email, I'm just going to add a reference to the NG model. So email input, let's say, is equal to the NG model. So this way I'm adding a reference to the NG model of this input and I'll be able to check the value and then compare that value to the requirements. Down here after the input, I'm going to add a div. So just type in your div and this class will have the div text error, which will make the text red. And this div with the text error or let's change it to text danger. This is the right value will show up only if the following conditions are met. So ng if, and then you will check for the email input. On the email input, we are going to check if it's invalid. And the email input, so 
email input is dirty. The dirty property in here is used to check if the user did click on this input. So if the user did click, we want to automatically make this required or the user did submit the form. So, or the feedback form that submitted. Okay, so if any of these conditions was met, then we want to show the errors inside here. And here now we are going to have two errors because we have two conditions, one for the required and one for the email address, so for the email format. Let's add the first div. So the first div is going to be ng if the email input that has errors. So if it has an error which is related to required, then we want to show the message email is required. So if the email input has an error that's related to required, then show this message. If so I'll just copy and paste it one more time. If the error is related to the email, then show the error invalid format or invalid email format. So now let us add the same code for the phone number. And the first condition is going to be the same. So we want to check if we have or if the input was dirty or not. And then we want to check the pattern. So on the phone number, we need to first add the phone input as a reference to ng model. And then down here, we're going to have if the phone input is invalid and the phone input is dirty and the feedback form has been submitted. We're going to check for the error related to the pattern. So if the phone input has an error related to the pattern, then just show the error in invalid phone number format. Let's do the same for the other properties. Let me just Structure the code a little bit. Okay, so it looks like this. We have a class. We have this condition up here. This needs to be in here. So let me copy this section and then I'll just scroll down. We don't need it for the rate. Let's go to the feedback title. Same way, just after the input, we're going to have the div. But we need to add an input check in here. So this is going to be feedback title input in reference to the ng model. And then feedback title input. So in here, we're going to check for the feedback title input if it's invalid. And feedback title input is dirty. And the feedback form has been submitted. In this case, the same way, we are going to check for the required and also the pattern. So for the pattern, we're going to check if the feedback title input has an error related to the pattern or if it has an error related to required. Just showing here, feedback title is required. And let us do the same for the feedback value. So I'll control C and then just paste it down here. And on here, we are going to add another input. So this is not going to be the feedback input. Let's copy this value. I'll just paste it in here, in here, and then in here and in here. And then we have submit feedback button. Let us save the changes. I'll just go back to the form. And now in here, if I just click on the email address and then just type something, it says invalid format. And if I remove it, it says email is required. So I'll just add Ervis at trupia.com. This is a fake email address. You see the error is gone. 
Now for the phone number, let's say one, two, three, four, and then four, five, six, seven. We get this error which says that invalid phone number format. Then I'll just go back to our code and check the pattern. Okay, so in here on the phone number pattern, what this says is that we need to type a number between zero and nine, and then it needs to be followed by a dash. Now that's not a pattern that we want. A pattern could be something like you want to have four numbers and then another four numbers separated by a dash. For that, I can just type in here, I want to have zero to nine, and I want to have four numbers. And then after four numbers, I want to have another four numbers between zero and nine. And this is a valid pattern. So I'll just save the changes and go back to the app. In here now, I'll just type an email address, a phone number, let's say one, two, three, four, and then eight, seven, six, five. So you can see now that the error is gone. We don't have any additional checks in here. I'll just set the feedback to be nine. On the title, I'll just type, let's say, this is a title. And you can see that I get this error in here, which doesn't seem to be related to feedback. So if I type, let's say, this is example, I get the invalid phone number format. Let me go back to the app one last time. Let us check the feedback title it does have a pattern. And if you want, I'll just remove actually the pattern. That's not complicated. Just remove the pattern up here. I just remove the pattern from here as well. And then from here, let's just keep them as required fields. Let us now go back to the app one last time. And here I'll just add all the data one more time. And you can see that the submit feedback button is enabled. So if I remove the title, get the error, feedback title is required and the button is disabled. If you just type in here, anything and you can click the submit feedback. I'll just open F12. I'll just open the console by pressing F12 and then click submit feedback. You'll see that we have all the values in here. So we have the email address, we have the feedback, feedback title, phone number, and also the rate. So this is all for this part. And this is all for the template driven forms. On the next part, we're going to talk about the reactive forms.